Hi everybody, this is Tom DeVita of DeVita Academy of Art. I hope you're happy, healthy, and creative during this quarantine. This video will be a self-portrait with a limited palette. Um, it's inspired by the quarantine, so there's uh, hopefully a sense of isolation, uh, a pensiveness uh, feeling that we're trying to evoke. You can do a, a self-portrait as well, or you could do a still life or a landscape. Whatever works for you. But let's try to do it in a limited palette together. For the limited palette, we're going to be using titanium white. Mine is by Musini, which I really like. Very white, very bright. Chinese vermilion by saint Elier, Gold ochre by Gamblin. Ivory black by Gamblin. And burnt umber just for the ground color. My medium of choice is Liquid by Winsor Newton. I find that it's really versatile, it dries quickly, it has low odor, it's great for glazing, and it cleans off the brush as well. I have rosemary brushes, cotton swabs, rags, paper palette, workable spray fixative by Krylon. The charcoal brand I used was Neutrum. First thing you want to think about is mapping and scale. Mapping is where do I put this face? Do I want it in the center? Do I want it peeking in from the left in this case? And the scale, how big do I want it? How close do I want the viewer to be to the person in the picture? Do I want it to be more intimate or more of a voyeur farther away? In this case, we made it more true to life size. Once you establish how big the head's gonna be and where it's gonna be on the canvas, we can start dividing the parts of the head, such as the forehead, the nose, the mouth, the eyes, etc. They have to be in relationships that are in proportionately congruent to the reference material. We can also start blending out with our stump to establish some shadows so it can help us decide whether or not we're, we're drawing it correctly. We want to get the spirit of the sitter. We don't want to transcribe the photo into paint. We want it to transcend the photo or the reference material. We want it to be better than the photo. This is perhaps the hardest part of the whole painting, the drawing. If the drawing's wrong, no one's going to care if the colors are right. So we have to make sure we spend our time making sure that the drawing is perfect. Once we're satisfied with our drawing, we're going to add an underpainting or a wash to tone the canvas. This requires that we spray fix our charcoal or it'll just rub off. With liquid and some umber, in this case burnt umber, I applied a wash over the whole canvas, which was spray fixed, of course, and then I wiped it off to remove the excess. I didn't remove all the umber because I'm going to use that in my underpainting. I'm going to remove with cotton swabs, the highlighted areas to establish a monochromatic tonal underpainting. Now we can start building our limited palette. Our limited palette will consist of really just two colors and white and black. But by mixing these colors together, we can create a vast array of tones and colors to start our portrait. We're gonna use gold ochre, Chinese vermilion, titanium white, and ivory black. The great thing about a limited palette is our ability to think of color as temperature. Um, it's very easy to color match because there's only a few colors on the palette. So here is the palette mixed. I created a great flesh color with yellow ochre, Chinese vermilion and white. I have a beautiful violet from the Chinese vermilion and black. I have a great green from the yellow ochre, ivory black and white. And of course there's colors in between that we didn't mix yet. Each one of those colors, of course, could be tinted lighter with the titanium white. So you really have a vast array of color and temperature to use in this portrait. What you want to focus on right away is to establish the temperature of light that you have. Do you have a warm light with cool shadows or a cool light with warm shadows? Also, you want to think of broad transitions. You don't want to put details in. You don't want to add your darks, and you don't want to add your highlights yet. You don't want to commit too fast. You want to think in broader terms. The next layer, you will glaze or add more detail, add more highlights, and push the darks. You want to follow your reference. Hold up your color to your reference to match. 
Remember, you have a limited palette, so you're not going to get exact colors. But through simultaneous contrast, which I'll speak about later, you'll see how you can trick the eye into believing you have a lot more colors on that palette. This is the second layer. We're going to add more details. We're going to push our contrast with definition. We're going to accentuate the highlights. We're going to tighten up some of our loose areas. And we're really going to start pushing our color. Notice the blue in the sky. It is not blue, it's gray. But because of simultaneous contrast, forced by having a warm against a neutral gray, your eye will perceive it as blue. One thing I noticed while doing this self-portrait was the enormous size of my forehead compared to the rest of my face. I still don't understand why my wife ever married me. The last element to the painting is my quarantine friend. It's this little lizard he used to hang out with me by the pool. But you can put whatever element you feel makes your quarantine painting truthful, like banana bread. The key to a great realist painting is drawing. You need to practice drawing every day, sketch from life, practice figure drawing. This way, when you get to painting, it will be effortless and it will be fun. Here's a close up of the face. Notice the underpainting still showing through. I used that to my advantage. You don't have to hide everything on your painting. Only paint what's necessary. There's my little friend. And we're gonna come down here to that simultaneous contrast. Notice that transition is what makes the illusion. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you soon at the Academy. Stay healthy, happy, and be creative. Thanks.